you know, first of all, you know, congratulations, guys, on on truly a season of television that I think is really quite remarkable and, and one of uh, one of my favorite things in recent memory. I think you guys have have so much to be proud of. I, I am curious, though. You know, obviously, in between the premiere of season one and the premiere of season two, two and a half years, right? So, how much concern was there about audiences finding the show again? Um, oh yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we had so many other things to think about that we were like, oh um, I think once it moved to HBO Max, that was like very helpful for our brains. You know what I mean? To be like, oh, okay, I think if and when we can ever finish this thing, hopefully that will help people find it more. You know what I mean? Like yeah. as, we were, as we were shooting, like HBO Max was taking off and more shows were finding an audience on HBO Max. So we were like, please happen to us too. Um, so, and I, and I think a lot of people are finding the first season for the first time now too. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it's been, we've been very lucky. Yeah, did you have any concerns, lucky that, Sarah? I was just gonna say, I felt, we felt like the, um, we were very lucky that the people who did find the first season were, like, very passionate about it, and, and they, they were the, some of the first people to, when there was a new season announced, be like, finally, I'm so glad, like, they, they stuck with us, and so we, we feel, we owe it to that core. Yeah. <laughs> Our day ones. <laughs> of course, yeah, I love that. Um, you know, I, I would love to really zero in on the exploration of, of Carrie's sexuality in, in the second season, which truly I, I found to be really one of the most nuanced and really kind of specific depictions of like what it means to be a modern day gay man in this time. You know, he Thank really you. goes through this full Thank arc, you. full arc in the season. <laughs> I did that. He goes, <laughs> he goes through this full arc in the season, right, of like kind of being hesitant to even download Grinder, and then he becomes sort of world famous for his, you know, butthole being out in the world. <laughs> I, you know, it's like, why did you want to kind of focus on that aspect uh, of Carrie and really kind of zero in on maybe sort of the hesitancy that he sort of had uh, and maybe still has about his own sexuality? Yeah, we talked a lot about like when we first started the whole show, like in episode one, that maybe one of the reasons Carrie isn't as successful as his little brother and then now his mother and like what is success, but whatever, um, yeah. is because he doesn't know who the fuck he is and he's not comfortable in his own skin. You know, he, do he doesn't feel like he knows who he is. And if you don't know who you are, then how is someone else going to know who you are? And so we kind of liked exploring that as he gets more comfortable in his sexuality, he actually finds more success in his life. Um, not because it's like, if you have more sex, you'll succeed in Hollywood, maybe. But we like the idea that he kind of just like owns himself a little more, owns his sexuality a little bit more. Um, yeah. You know, when we first met him, he was like hooking up with his straight roommate and, you know, it was kind of self hatey and a little homophobic. And um, he still has traces of that, as people often do throughout a long period of their lives. But we like kind of chipping away at it and, and having him slowly but surely, you know, spread his wings and become a little more comfortable. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, I, you know, I think he really represents somebody who I don't know that I've ever seen on television necessarily where, you know, he is he is somebody who's obviously out of the closet, but he still, I think, feels very insecure in his own skin. And there's this idea of him sort of feeling like an other inside his own community. Right. So I, I'm wondering, maybe, Chris, specifically, if, if you drew on anything from your own personal experience, your life, to sign it kind of make carry this this fully fleshed out character that he really uh really is yeah i guess <clears throat> it's me and it's both of us and it's like our writer's room too like we kind of all just like spitball of like things that we've gone through or things that we can relate to so some of the things carrie goes through is like a verbatim something that's happened to me or it could be the seeds of some anxiety someone in the writer's room has felt that we then extrapolate on you know what i mean like um yeah um but uh yeah, I think there is this idea when you come out of the closet that you're like, I'm done, hooray, you know what I mean? I did it, I used to be homophobic, I used to not be comfortable, and now I'm out and I'm done forever, signing off. You know? <laughs> like, oh shit, I actually gonna kind of weirdly find myself unpacking this for a lot longer than I thought. And then when I'm done unpacking it and I'm ready to sign off again, I'm like, ah, there's a more bag that I have to unpack. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, one of the things that I relate to specifically, like that episode where Carrie and his boyfriend are um, showing this other couple around New York City and they, yeah. think it, they think it's a father and son. Like I related to that when I came out where I was like, mom, dad, I'm gay and I need you to hear that, but don't worry, I'm barely gay. And I'm actually like, 
I'm like straight gay. Like I'm straight, but like a little bit, you know what I mean? Like this kind of yeah. good gay for mommy and daddy. I, I sure. remember that whole song and dance for a while. I, um, I, yeah, like that tour around New York City that they give, I was like, it was horrifying because I was I was thinking back to like when I would have friends come visit me like in LA like years ago like the places like we have to go here and I was like now I think back to the trips I made my friends take out here like oh my god I had no idea what I was doing that's it um, yeah uh, Sarah I, I I would love to to pivot to uh, to Brooke and maybe direct this question to you you know Brooke is sort of on obviously her own journey throughout. The season it, it mirrors Carrie's in a way because she's trying to figure out who she is in this new world too. It's like she's trying to figure out how to be the right sort of feminist and how to navigate the world of business and entertainment. And I, I really love what the show does when it sort of looks into the performative aspect of like social media, right? And Brooke trying to figure out how to use that to her advantage and, and how to navigate like who she really is with the person that she's uh, perceived as. Um, I, I'm wondering if that's ever been something that, that you've struggled with and you, Chris, as well, about like how to really kind of present yourself online in an age where, you know, that's, that's all people see sometimes. Has that have been a struggle for you trying to figure out how to, how to be portrayed online? Um, oh yeah, it's paralyzing. <laughs> I feel like today, especially, it's like anything I think about posting, I can think of 10 reasons not to post it. It's, you know, yeah. not the time or it's like, who cares about that? Or like, I look bad. Like every every single something has a, has a downside. And I do think a lot of what Brooke and Carrie are both working through is how society perceives them. And there is that one episode in particular, how other people perceive them in general. There is that one episode in particular, which is episode seven, which is the one where Brooke's on that women's panel and doesn't, is like so in her head about not belonging there and not, um, why is anyone asking her any questions about being a woman or questions in general? Like she doesn't, yeah. she's a nobody, she's trash. And Carrie similar is going through this, um, he, he loses his movie. And so he's like, I'm not getting anywhere. Like I'm just still back at square one. And it takes both these other people in their lives to be like, you're doing good. You just can't see that for yourself because you're too close to it. Like, um, yeah. his best, Carrie's best friend is like, you're moving the goalpost. You're not at zero. Like, if anything, I'm at zero and you need to read the fucking room because you're now being insensitive the way you talk about how you're doing. And, and Shuli, played by Wanda, is, tells Brooke, you know, like, people are here to see you and they, ha they are um, sad that you don't care about them because they care about you. You're now yeah. like a powerful businesswoman in your own right. And the only reason you were out there flailing is because you just don't see yourself the way that other people do. Yeah. Um, so we do delve into the, just these ideas of public perception and perceiving yourself and how others see you um, because that is fully <laughs> how we all go through life these days. Yeah, that's it. Uh, you know, uh, on the topic of Brooke, Alessia Cara, <laughs> is the the white whale really of season of season two i'm wondering if if there were any other names that you guys tossed around when you were sort of coming up with this like elusive alessia car and then also did you know when you were at the start that alessia would be making an appearance at the end of the season yeah i mean we knew this like general idea that we wanted brooke to have this white whale of alessia cara and alessia cara we were very excited and wanted to see if she would do it but then had no um assume she wouldn't want to you know or yeah be like what is this show or no obviously i'm busy um but then when she was interested we were like well we need to shoot her first <laughs> we need to shoot her first <laughs> one lock her yeah, in yeah. get her on camera baby um and so that's kind of what we did we like shot her scenes like pretty pretty early on that way when brooke says her name in all the other episodes we <laughs> we, knew, we knew we had her because yeah. yeah it was sort of a, a big risk to try to thread that through all season and then not get someone because um, otherwise every time we saw her she would be like I can't I, I really want to manage yeah we were like oh, whatever no, whatever not. name <laughs> under yeah, the hand right. yeah 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 Wait, we had yeah, we had shot one scene actually already that we had to shoot and we didn't know if Alessia was going to do it and so yeah we did have to ADR but <laughs> I I love Alessia Cara don't get me wrong but why Alessia Cara <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know. We were like talking about who it could be and we're fans of hers. And I think we were like listening to her. one of her songs was on the radio at the time. So she was like front of mind, you know what I mean? And yeah. also, I mean, this was also like two years ago that yeah. this we thought of her. And then also weirdly yeah. now that her episode just came out and then she just released a new album. On like anyway. the same day or something. Yeah, we very, right? very, very, very weird. Very weird. So weird. 
Very weird timing. Um, yeah. We liked how like cool and young she was. It was like the perfect, she's the perfect demographic for Brooke to constantly be like, we're peers where it's like, LOL, yeah. you're 30 and like a manager and nobody knows who you are. You are not, absolutely not peers. Yeah. Uh, and she was great on the show too. I, I, she was yeah, so she, good. She was so funny. Yeah, yeah. she was great. We really loved uh, her. Yeah, that's great. Uh, well, to pivot uh, to Pat, which is really all I ever want to be talking about, you know, from, <laughs> from watching Pat the show within the show, uh, I, I was talking to Sarah about this a little bit earlier. It's clear that you guys have a love and appreciation for daytime television, right? Uh, what what shows did you maybe watch to inspire you? What shows did you guys watch growing up that you used as, as inspiration for Pat? You know, I more feel like I have an empathy for people who feel like they must watch it. <laughs> no. Interesting. <laughs> no, I, I, we, I know it feels weird because we don't. We talk about we, yeah. We don't watch a ton of daytime you know what I mean like we yeah we yeah we grew up maybe sort of like knowing like the Oprah's and my mom would watch it and my mom would watch the Today Show every morning when she got ready and so I it's more of like we know the things that everyone knows about daytime TV it's sort of just like yeah. in the blood of, of Americans um, yeah. but it's not like we're like we are parodying Ellen or we are parodying Rosie or anything like that we just sort yeah. of took the essence of what we felt like they all were like they're all this all eco this whole ecosystem and it's kind of like, if you're in and you watch those shows, damn it, you are in and you watch those oh. shows. You know what I mean? Like, those <laughs> yeah. are your, you know? <laughs> so that kind of like um, intense community was, was what we um, latched onto. Um, but yeah, there's no like one show that we were like, okay, we're sure. really mapping onto on or something. Yeah, did you yeah. did you watch any of those shows growing up, Sarah? We were talking earlier about, you know, like the uh, the Ricky Lakes yeah. and the, uh, the Jenny Joneses of the world, the sort of the oh, classics. Yeah stay yeah. home from school and uh and watch these what do you have any growing up uh that you liked yeah ricky lake was mine that was like what There's i would so watch Ricky lake yes <laughs> because i i felt like it was like um you know how you would go to you would get up be home and like from sick from school and you're just like i never see what's on tv now never i'm always at freaking school so it was yeah. like such forbidden fruit of like what the adults are watching when they get to stay home it wasn't like for me, I didn't really enjoy it, but it was that I was like, oh, I get to experience this for once. I'm an adult. This is, this well, is what they do all day. My biggest memory of daytime TV is I remember, I told you this, Sarah, but occasionally, it feels like every goddamn third day, Oprah would be like, and on tomorrow's show, could your kid be looking at gay porn on your family? <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, we have to keep mom busy tomorrow at four. And then like the next day at four, I'd be like, mom, what the heck? How do trees get made or anything? <laughs> How I, know, I, I, get made. I looked at the window and I saw a tree. Um, <laughs> I would be just in panic when my mom always watched Oprah and I'd always be like, what is tomorrow's topic? Yeah. Oh, man. Some mm. of those Oprah. Uh, God, I miss Oprah. So much. <laughs> so um, you know, it's uh, it, what I love uh, so much about the show sometimes is how specific so many of the pop culture references are. I mean, just personally speaking, I love every single Housewives reference that we can get in there. <laughs> um, have there ever been, uh, and we can talk Housewives at length, uh, but uh, have, there ever, have there ever been any maybe references that were maybe even like too niche for the show <laughs> that were in a script or, you know, you sort of use and said, I don't, that might be, that might be too specific even for us. I know, I don't remember them, but that's certain. That will happen every once in a while while where like Chris will pitch a joke or I'll pitch a joke and if one of the other doesn't know what it is we're like maybe not but if both of us do then we like the specificity of that because a lot of times yeah. it's conversational or it's between Brooke and Carrie and we like that that familiarity that comes with the depth of their references like the, it's the way that Chris and I talk and we're yeah. with each other all the time so it, it carries into their relationship mm -hmm. but but yeah I don't I have like a specific yeah, I can't think of a specific is there what what is it what is it about the uh, about the housewives? Are you I, I know Chris you are Sarah are you as well? Are you, I mean, what, what is yeah, it? I, <laughs> I go in phases right right now I'm on Potomac, but okay. I have previously been very into New York, not into it as much right now. But but yeah, tough year, tough year for the girls. Going waves. <laughs> yeah, the hills. Yeah, oh man, so, but we got Beverly Hills this season, Sarah. We got to catch up. Are you back on? Because I fell off of that like a couple of years ago. Yeah, like a couple of years ago, I was like not feeling it anymore. But then I have heard that it is maybe back. <laughs> I, I mean, this season I can I consider to be one of the finest seasons of television I've ever seen. I mean, we Beverly Hills has been one of the worst 
things on television for about 12 years now. And <laughs> now this season is so good. All it but takes you, is a little, all it takes is a little criminality and we're <laughs> right back think, in, baby. I think Potomac is the best <laughs> Potomac, even if nothing is happening, I still just like enjoy watching those women, even if it's yeah. nothing good is happening or there's not a good fight. They're just all like yeah. funny and interesting and like, I just I know. love watching them. But I'm like, Beverly Hills, if something isn't happening, get those women all Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> it's because Potomac's only in like season five or something and Beverly Hills is like, they're you know they've been around for a while it's 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 going to work for them now yeah, yeah. i get i guess I, I guess all i can say is karen huger on the other two when oh my god she's the best she is the best she's the funniest oh character in tv she's one of the, wait there is wait this is like being recorded and it's like an official interview so why are we talking about this for this long but you see that bit of a comic where you keep going <laughs> wait where karen huger has to go do um like a tourism video for surrey oh. county <laughs> Have you seen that, Sarah? Yes. Oh, she does yeah. a tour. Did you see it, Sarah? I saw her get the key to the city. She I think I'm gonna get it behind. She does a tourism video for Surrey County, oh, but she no. doesn't get to Surrey County. She just films it where she lives, which is not Surrey County. And she's doing a tourism video, and it keeps being like, "This is not Surrey County." <laughs> and then they're like, "Okay, so talk about all the things that Surrey County has. Like, we're famous for our peanuts, and so then that's literally all it's famous for." So she's like, "Surrey County, home of a uh, peanuts um, that come." <laughs> in the shell, if you will. Like she's trying to like gloss up that oh. peanut. She says in the shell, if you will, to try to like make peanuts sound like more than oh, peanut. Oh. And then it's her like a photo of peanuts. <laughs> and then she goes down and slides. It like height, it's like heightening. It's like perfect okay. comedy heightening. She went to her, her like parade, which was very yeah. sweet. And then she went to her key ceremony, which was like a huge set up for like literally five and people they, and they, this is the third beat that sounds great and then the producer also says mention the ham it could be a ham and then she goes then of course there's the ham oh, no. <laughs> okay great it's really fun oh god well listen karen and the girls of potomac uh only rivaled by uh the other two uh <laughs> look at me bringing it home um well, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, sincerely, congratulations to to you two and everybody involved. The show's phenomenal, and everybody is everybody is finding that out. And uh, I'm telling everybody that I know or don't know uh, to oh, to great. watch it. Yeah, I just I yell it on the street quite often. Perfect. Um, but uh, yeah, congratulations. It, it, it's a phenomenal show, and I I think uh, dare I say kind of an important show. So uh, I cannot wait. Look forward nice. to more. And uh, thank you guys for your time. Thank you Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, nice Bye, guys. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.